Hello, and welcome to the Civil Justice Magazine, where each week we take well-noted lawyers from around the country who've made significant contributions to the civil justice system. Today we have my longtime friend and colleague, Michael Pontario, who is known for his meticulous preparation, his balance, and his dedication to his clients. Uh, Chris, good morning, how are you Michael, doing? how are you? Good, Chris. How are you this morning? Thank you. We're here today to talk to you about the case of Jerry Sutner, who I understand you obtained a $3 million verdict for in a New York court, correct? That's right. This past October. That's right. In Buffalo, New York. Can you tell me uh, a little bit about Mr. Sutner and what his case was about? Sure. Jerry Sutner was a longtime worker at a General Motors facility in, in Tonawanda, New York, and he was a pipe fitter required to maintain industrial valves. And during the course of that work, he came in contact with asbestos containing gaskets and packing that he was required to remove. He was exposed to the dust and he contracted years later a, a fatal cancer called mesothelioma. Now, in, in this case, as I understand it, there are always issues about how much asbestos is released from using a product like a gasket. Uh, did you face that issue in this case, and, and what was the jury asked to decide? We certainly did, and one of the issues was there enough exposure to the gaskets uh, to cause Jerry's mesothelioma. A crane company maintained that the gaskets were encapsulated. They were incapable of releasing asbestos fibers. We showed to the jury through expert testimony and common sense that at the get-go, these gaskets contained almost 100% asbestos, but they were bound in a rubber matrix. And when they came in contact with high-pressure steam, the rubber melted releasing the asbestos fibers, so Jerry was exposed to virtually a product that contained 100% asbestos. What kind of experts did you use to prove this? We used two experts, an industrial hygienist and a material scientist. The material scientist actually replicated work practice studies using uh, the type, same type of gaskets that Jerry Sutner used in the same manner that he used them and he demonstrated to the jury through videotape testimony through a demonstration how the asbestos fibers were released and in what quantities. What was the evidence in the case about just how much exposure does it take to cause a disease like mesothelioma? Well we have had testimony that certainly when you at a workplace setting, there is no safe level of asbestos at the workplace in order to prevent mesothelioma. And uh, we have experts routinely come in and say, explain to the jury, just one gram of asbestos contains 13 trillion asbestos fibers. And that uh, when you have a product that contains nearly 100% asbestos, and uh, it, it contains quadrillion individual asbestos fibers and that the exposures uh, from uh, manipulating those products release billions upon billions of fibers uh, more than enough to contribute to causing mesothelioma. Now in this case obviously you got a tremendous result. Um, wh why in your opinion is this case important to the civil justice system? We think it's extremely important because Crane's primary argument to the jury was that we used the component part manufactured by another, another company, and that when we sold our valves, uh, they, the components that we used were replaced by comp another company's products and that they should not be held liable in any fashion for replacement parts. And we argued to the jury that this company, Crane, knew, they specked out, that an important component to their products was asbestos, asbestos gaskets. 
and that you had to use asbestos gaskets for high pressure steam valves and that they can't escape liability. Uh, we use the analogy that say you had General Motors that use brake linings in their cars. They don't make those brake linings but if they know or have reason to know those brake linings are dangerous and they sell their cars and brake linings need to be replaced and you go to a service station and the service guy looks at the brakes and he uses the same brakes to replace the brakes that GM originally specified that they're responsible for introducing those brakes into the stream of commerce for specifying those are to be used and it's very important for any company that incorporates component parts to test and inspect their product. What did the judge tell the jury uh, the law was concerning this issue of component parts? Because I know this is a raging battle uh, around the country in asbestos litigation in particular and in product liability cases in general. So what did the judge actually say to the jury was the state of the law that they had to follow? The judge told the jury that a company that manufactures a piece of equipment that utilizes component parts, that company has a duty to test and inspect their component parts for safety. And failure to test and inspect those component parts is negligence. And that furthermore, when the company specifies that those component parts are to be used and to be replaced that the company, the valve company, the equipment manufacturer has a continuing obligation to warn of the dangers that it knows or should know about the hazards of the component parts. Now like in any drama and trials are dramas there is usually a turning point in the case where you feel you felt that well I think the jury is getting this or I think I've made my point was there such a turning point in this case that you can recall for us there was the the corporate representative for crane company gentleman by the name of Anthony Pantaleone he testified that within the company he was the most knowledgeable person regarding the dangers of asbestos and he said he interviewed company people for a crane company and nobody knew asbestos was dangerous until 1972. We introduced documents which showed that crane company in their corporate headquarters in Chicago in the 1930s their corporate officers were trying to legislate out of the court system asbestos cases that were being filed against them for workers that were becoming sick and dying from asbestos. And when we cross-examined Mr. Pantaleone and said, don't you agree that the corporate officials at Crane knew in the 1930s that asbestos could kill people? He said, well, they might have known, but the company today didn't know. And the jury thought that was totally incredible testimony. Now, obviously, Crane would disagree with your characterization uh, yes. I know they have very fine lawyers. Um, they do indeed. Do, do you believe that this case um, is over or it will be appealed and Crane will get the right to argue it on another day? Crane had excellent trial lawyers. They have appealed and this case will be heard by higher courts. And is that in the process of appeal now? It isn't. Yes, it is. Now, I have one question. Um, how long before, how long after Mr. Uh, Sutner was diagnosed was the case filed? Well, it was filed within a couple months after his diagnosis and he had a trial date uh, shortly within about a year, little over a year from the date of filing of the lawsuit. Did he testify himself at trial? Unfortunately, he passed away right before his trial, and we had preserved his testimony by video, and we played his video testimony to the jury. Now, I know you, you said you filed this within a couple of months. Was there, 
is there some kind of time limit? I'm sure there is in New, in New York within which you have to file a case? Yes. Uh, there are strict time limitations. Uh, for instance, in New York State, you have to file a case within three years of the date you knew of the symptoms giving rise to your injury. And in, in, in this case, in, in New York State, where you have a person with a terminal cancer, they actually leapfrog over other cases and are given a trial preference within one year of the date of filing of the complaint. But that changes, as I know, and, and you've been around the country, that changes from state to state. For example, where I am in New Jersey, they have a two-year statute. Other places have different. And so what's the take-home for people um, who are diagnosed with this horrible disease in terms of preserving their legal rights? They should contact their attorney, a reputable attorney, that deals with mesothelioma cases as soon as possible. Don't waste any time because it's critical to preserve your testimony and explain your, your case so that a jury hears from you how this cancer has devastated your life and how you were exposed to the defendant's products. Well, thank you, Michael. I think that was thank extremely you. instructive for our viewers. Uh, and I hope that uh, uh, you will come back and talk to us about what happens on the appeal or tell us about your next victory and how you contributed positively to uh, upholding the rights of injured victims in the civil justice system. Thank you very much, Chris. Happy and holidays. Have a great day. You too.